Hello and welcome to our recap on the framework. So remember that our framework is not an IAS. So it's there simply to assist preparers of financial statements, those people who are preparing our financial statements. Why do they need to do that? Well, the framework assists future development, so it gives us definitions to do that. It reduces permitted treatments because it gives us principles on which to base treatments. It therefore assists the standard setters when they're making new standards. They can go back to the definitions of an asset and a liability, for example. It'll assist auditors to decide whether uh, treatments are permitted or not. And it provides an approach for our financial statements. So the content of the framework document, well, it sets out the objective of financial statements, and that is to provide useful information for economic decisions by the users. To do that, the qualitative characteristics of the financial statements are outlined, and they are that they should be relevant, i.e. they should be of value to the users. Reliability also then is a key aspect of the financial statements, so they should provide a faithful representation of what's actually happened in the entity. They should be neutral, so they shouldn't give a biased view. They should be complete, everything should be included in there. Also, they should be prudent. There shouldn't be anything in there that you don't expect to get. And they should be error-free. There shouldn't be any mistakes in them. So also it outlines that there should be comparability. So disclosure should be made to ensure that they are comparable. They should be understandable. And they should be understandable to someone who has a re reasonable knowledge. So you don't have to be a qualified accountant to understand the financial statements. It also talks about materiality, which is not exceeding uh, the, the benefit of actually doing something. So the cost not exceeding the benefit of preparing the financial statements. It also tells us that there are some assumptions to make whenever we're preparing the financial statements. Those are the accruals basis should be used and they should be prepared on a growing, a going concern basis. So we looked at that in illustration one in the lecture. The framework also gives us definitions for the different elements of the financial statements. So for example, the definition of an asset is given as a resource controlled by the entity, as a result of past events, from which future economic benefit is expected to flow to the entity. That's the definition of an asset. And you'll see as you look at different standards, that is what they refer to whenever they say whether or not to recognise an asset. A liability definition is given as a present obligation as a result of a past event expected to result in an outflow of resources. Again, that's a key definition because all of the different standards within IFRS will use that definition for a liability. The equity in an entity, therefore, is the assets less the liabilities. When it comes to income, remember it takes a balance sheet approach and says that an increase in economic benefit during the accounting period is income, i.e. your assets have gone up. When it comes to expenses, well, that will be a decrease in economic benefit during the accounting period, again taking a balance sheet approach. The framework also tells us when we need to recognise assets and liabilities and gives us some ways to measure them. So when it comes to recognition, well, they must meet the definition of an element, an asset, a liability, etc. So for an asset, there would need to be probable future economic benefit. And for all of them, we'll need to get a reliable measure. We can't bring it in if we don't have a reliable measure. So the stages will be to recognise it, remeasure it and de-recognise it based on how you use whatever it is we're looking at. Some of the measurement ways that we have available to us, we can do it at historic cost, current cost, realizable value, or present value. All of those are used uh, in different standards throughout IFRS and are allowed under the, the conceptual framework. Some of the key concepts that you need to be aware of, remember historic cost is measuring an asset at its historic cost less depreciation. So this has no relation to replacement cost, so is sometimes criticised on that basis. Also, it's usually below its current or fair value. Also, inflation is not included in historic cost. 
However, what we are trying to do with historic cost is recognize the usage of the asset, the economic benefit that we're going to get from the asset over the period of time we have it. So it's not necessarily related to the, co to the value of the asset at the current time. We can measure things at fair value, which remember is the amount at which an asset or liability could be exchanged in an arm's length transaction between informed and willing parties. So for example, if there was an active market for it, a share price would be an example in the stock market, or similar items, what are they sold for? That could give us the fair value of an item. If we don't have either of those, we could use a valuation model. So we can use fair value in various different standards. When it comes to other methods that we could use, we have CPP, which is constant purchasing power. Under this method, it adjusts for inflation. Um, and what does that mean? Well, it's simple and it's standard. We adjust for inflation based on an index and it would therefore measure the true value of something. However, it wouldn't really have um, a link to fair value. It would just be an arbitrary movement based on inflation. Is it understandable? Well, the users would have to understand the inflation concept and what you're trying to achieve. And it is a bit simplistic because we'd simply be using an index. For those reasons, this isn't used within our a, a conceptual framework. We could use current cost, which is the replacement cost. This would inform the user a bit more uh, in the detail of the replacement cost, but it would be complex to implement every year and therefore isn't used very much within the standards. So that is a recap of our lecture on the framework.